All right, well, here we are. Last Sunday service for the year 2020. Um, for those of you that are joining us online, we miss seeing you, hopefully. Um, in, in due time, we'll be able to worship with you again. Uh, Dan, good to see you. Uh, I don't think, I don't think any of us are, are in danger of forgetting the year 2020 anytime soon. Uh, and I think in, I think in many ways we are glad to be done with this year, are we not? Um, but here's the thing, you know, come, come the new year 2021, maybe you'll stay up late and if you want to watch a countdown, I don't know if they're still going to do a countdown in Times Square. They might drop the ball, but nobody will be out there, hopefully. Um, maybe you'll stay up late at night, watch that computer or your phone count down to 12 a.m. and watch the year flip over. Um, but what do you think happens then, right? At that moment when, when, when the clock changes over? Well, first of all, for us here on the West Coast, a lot of other people have already celebrated that change because there are time zones ahead, right? We understand that this change, uh, this changing of the guard, this new year, it's, it's, it's an arbitrary thing that man has assigned. It's not like when that year changes from 2020 to 21 that, that the coronavirus is going to go away. Um, it's not like travel and gathering restrictions are all of a sudden going to get lifted. It's not like the ICU beds are all of a sudden all going to free up, right? Um, if all the ICU beds free up all at once, either it's a really good thing or it's a really bad thing, right? So it's, things are not going to change like that when, when the new year starts. And so what exactly is it that makes us glad when the years come to an end? What is it that makes us look forward to the new year? Right? I don't know what it is that gives you hope for the new year. Um, is, is it a vaccine? I, I know a lot of people are looking to the vaccine to be a great help, and I believe that it will be a great help for us. Um, and may the Lord help us through the vaccines that have been brought to market so quickly. But I don't think it's going to solve all our problems. Right? For, for the businesses that have, you know, had to shutter their doors. I, I don't think a vaccine is going to bring them back right away. Um, what's giving you hope for the new year? Is it perhaps that a second stimulus bill is going to be signed? Um, you know, you know that all these, all these stimulus checks and these extra unemployment benefits, you know who's paying for that, right? Um, everyone, everyone say thank you to Ellie and Penelope. Right, the two two youngest babies in, in our midst, because they're the ones that are going to be footing this bill for generations and their kids for generations to come. They're the ones that are going to be footing these trillion dollar stimulus bills that have been signed into effect. All this economic relief, somebody's paying for it. Right. So when we ask what it is that we look forward to in 2021, uh, for this morning, I want to take another look at Simeon. So if you remember last week, last week we looked at Simeon from Luke chapter 2, and we looked at his prophecy for Mary, the mother of Jesus, and how when he beheld the baby Jesus, he then turned to Mary and he prophesied to her that her heart would be pierced with the sword of sorrow. That was his prophecy for her. And, and the Bible tells us that she heard these things and she held them in her heart. And we know that the sword of sorrow did pierce her heart that day when she stood at the foot of the cross and watched her son die. But I want to take a closer look at Simeon. So turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, if you remember last week, Simeon encountered Jesus when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple to present him to the Lord at a young age. And so, where we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 2 today, Joseph and Mary had just come to the temple. So if you have your Bibles with you, if you have your Bibles, open to Luke chapter 2 and read along. If you don't have it, your Bibles, just listen as we read. Luke chapter 2, we're going to start reading at verse 25. Luke chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. This much we know about Simeon. 
the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Christ, Jesus Christ. He would not die until he had seen the Christ. Imagine, imagine today that God gives you a revelation. He gives you some sort of marker by which you would know when you will die, right? Just, just picture that in your head. God speaks to you and says, when this such and such event happens, you are going to die. Might not be the kind of revelation that we were looking forward to, right? We're may, maybe looking for Jesus to reveal more of his character to us, more of his love, but when I'm going to die, I don't know if I want to know that. Um, you know, my, my grandmother, she had suffered a heart attack or two when I was younger. Um, when we go to buffets, she would often go right to the oysters and, and load up on, on raw oysters because she loved oysters. Um, her doctor would often tell her that she needs to cut down on foods that are high in cholesterol, like oysters and eggs. And she loves oysters and she loves eggs. And I remember she, she came home from a doctor's visit once and said, yeah, this is what the doctor told me. I need to cut down on oysters. I need to cut down on eggs. And then she said, I need to find a new doctor. She didn't like being told that she can't eat these things. And I think, I think it was after her second heart attack. Um, and I, I, I remember, I remember it. It was kind of scary. I remember she was sitting on her reclining sofa. And anyways, she prayed after the heart attack. She, she made it through, obviously. And she came home and I, I didn't know this till later, but she prayed to God because my brother and I were still in junior high at the time. She prayed to God and she asked, would you please let me at least live long enough to see my two grandsons make it into college? That was her prayer. She prayed, God, let me live long enough to see my two grandsons make it into college. I was, much later, fast forward, I was starting my senior year in college. My brother was starting his sophomore year. We've now both made it into college. That fall, she had her last heart attack, and that was it. She, she went home to be with the Lord. Um, if I had known, if I had known that that was what she had prayed for, and if I had known that the Lord was going to answer her prayer, I think I might have taken a gap decade between high school and college, right? Just to keep her around a little longer. But the, it's the Lord's will. He does what he chooses and it was her time it was her time to go see the lord and you know i think she would much rather see the lord than me right i want her to stay the lord says it's time to come home but here's my point here's my point if today we were told by god about a certain marker in our life that would indicate our end our our, our going home to him i think most of us maybe would be trying to avoid it as best as we can right for my grandmother, maybe, hey, you know, you guys don't go to college. Who needs a college degree, right? But not Simeon, not Simeon. Simeon was told that when he sees the Lord's Christ, that that's when he will die. And scripture tells us, scripture tells us that Simeon was just, he was devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. What is the consolation of Israel? That's Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He was going to come and console Israel. Simeon, knowing that seeing the Christ was going to be his end, looked forward to seeing him. You know, and I think this had very much to do with the kind of man he was. He was just and he was devout and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And so it's clear to us, as we read this, what Simeon's priorities were. His priorities were not to live longer. And it's not that Simeon had a death wish, right? It's not like Simeon received this revelation and every day, I want to see Jesus because I want to die. No, I, I believe that he wanted to live. But I think his wanting to live was not as important to him as seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. Looking forward to Jesus, he looked forward to Jesus more than he looked forward to living another day. You know, in, in high school, in high school, um, I wasn't scared of dying so much as I was worried that I would die before I got married because I didn't want to die before I had found someone who loved me, 
right? As you know, growing up, I unfortunately, and and this is you know, those of you that are single, don't do this. But growing up, I idolized relationships, and, and I guess maybe it had to do with this, the, the 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 media, you know, shoving that stuff into our brains. I idolized relationships in my mind. I didn't want to die lonely. If my parents heard that, they'd be upset because you know I wasn't lonely. I had a family that loved me, but in my mind, all I could fixate on was having a relationship, a romantic relationship, finding someone to love, finding someone who would love me. It was easy finding someone to love, let me tell you that. But that someone loving you back is not, that's the hard part, right? So that's the part I struggled with. I had an easy time finding people to love. Um, they're lost, by the way. But anyways, <laughs> finding someone to love and someone to love me, that was important to me and that was my priority. And it consumed my every waking moment. It, it was idolatry in my life, but not Simeon. Right, Simeon, we see clearly his priority, his hope, his motivation for each new day was looking forward to seeing Jesus. He looked forward to and he waited for the consolation of Israel. And coming back to Luke chapter 2, verse 29, this is what Simeon said. This is what Simeon said that day when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus and Simeon finally beheld Jesus, and actually he held the child in his arm. This is what Simeon said, verse 29, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. You are letting your servant depart in peace. This is what Simeon said when he held Jesus in his arms, when he finally saw the Christ. You are letting your servant depart in peace. Not, oh no, now I'm going to die. Right? He, his heart was in the right place. He, basically what he said in his heart is, I've seen the one that I have waited for my whole life, the only one who's ever mattered to me. Jesus was all that mattered to Simeon. Right? Now, what about porch light? That's what was on my heart this week. What about porch light? What is our priority? What is important to us? What is it that we are looking forward to? You know, as a church, as a church, we've been blessed to be able to resume meeting together. We're very blessed to be able to resume meeting together. And we're being careful. We're being careful, we're following protocol, we're doing what we can do to stay safe and to keep each other healthy and safe. We don't just do this for ourselves, we do it for each other around us. We do what we can to follow the protocols to keep each other safe and healthy. But we wanna ask ourselves, what is it that we are looking forward to in 2021? Where are we finding our hope? What is our focus? What is our purpose as a church? What is it that drives us and moves us forward? If, if our chief aim as a church is just to survive the pandemic, right? If that's the only thing that occupies us is how to survive the pandemic. If the thing that drives us going forward into the new year is how to stay safe. If our focus is how to make things more comfortable for everyone when they come to church. You know, I, I know it's been a while since you've seen the church banners. The last time any of us saw the church banners was back on March 8th. It's been a long time. And I don't know if you remember, but on the banners, under the logo of the church, we have the tagline for our church, right? Who knows what the tagline for, for Porch Light is? Christ, covenant, and community. That's what's important to us, that we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, we come and remember his covenant with us, and we we invest in the body of Christ, the community, Christ, covenant, community. But if we become completely fixated on the COVID protocols, if that's all that's on our mind all the time, we might need a new banner that says, porch light, mask, distance, sanitize, right? Throw out all the other stuff because this is all we're fixated on now, is that we need to stay safe, we need to do this and that. Pandemic survival and safety protocols are not the only thing that a church can get fixated on. There's a lot of other things 
that are not Jesus that a church can get fixated on. Some churches, some churches fixate on church finances and whether or not there's enough offering each month. Some churches, that's that you know, in behind the scenes in, in the staff meetings, that's all they discuss. Some churches fixate on the pageantry and the production of the worship service, making everything look and sound as good as it can. That's their primary focus. The church, what is the church? The church is the body of Christ. But if we're not careful, if we're not careful, the church can become the center for disease control. If we're not careful, the church can become just another business. If we're not careful, the church can become a performance center or a production studio. If the things that drive us, if what we focus on, if what's important to us is off track. Now, all these things I mentioned, all these things I mentioned, these are good things. They're very good things. But as I thought of these things and where a church can be misdirected, I couldn't help but be reminded of a warning that Jesus gave us in the book of Revelations. Some of you may be very familiar with this passage. In the book of Revelations, chapter 2, Jesus through the Apostle John gives this warning to us. It's written in the book of Revelations to the church in Ephesus, but this is a warning that we need to receive and we need to heed. I'll read it for you. If you want, you can turn there. Revelations chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. I know your works, your labors, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And ye have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars, and you have persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Good things to hear from Jesus, is it not? I know your works, I know your labor, I know your patience, I know you can't stand what's evil, I know you've held true, you've pressed on. You stay true to what I've told you to do. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Nevertheless, Jesus says, I have this, not I have something that I'm concerned about, but he has this against the church. Strong words. I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Jesus knows our works. He knows our labor. He knows our patience. What's very dangerous, even more dangerous than the new mutant strain of the virus, what's dangerous is that we can have our works, our labor, and our patience doing everything that looks right on the outside and all good things. But while we're doing all that, we've also left our first love. It's possible. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't say it. It is possible to be doing all the things that we need to do and have completely missed the mark. Look, we need to do our part to follow safety protocols, right? That's why we remind everyone again and again each week, keep your mask on, except I get to take the mask off when I speak because I've got the fan blowing air away from all of you, but keep your mask on. After service, when you're talking to each other, keep plenty of distance between each other. We remind everyone about the protocols because it's good to do. And the church needs to be financially responsible. Right? We, as a church, we need to be good stewards of what the Lord has given us. Those of us who are leading worship, we need to do our due diligence to, to practice, to be as musically proficient as God has given us capacity for. Don't shoot for more than what ga God gave us, but don't go below what God gave us either. These are just a few examples of what's good and necessary for the church, but we cannot become fixated on these things. These things cannot be what drives us. They cannot be what defines us. If there's one thing to fixate on, and it's not a thing, it is a person, it would be that we need to fixate on the person of Jesus Christ, our first love. We need to fixate on Jesus, our first love. You know, this year, this year as we've gone through the epistles, from Paul. We've been reading his letters to the different churches, and some churches receive more than one letter, but one 
prevailing and recurring theme in Paul's letters, if you remember, is to love one another, to consider one another, to lift each other up. That's important, but here's the thing. When we come to church, when we come to church, are we looking forward to seeing each other more than we are looking forward to meeting with Jesus? If that's the case, then we've got our priorities backwards. Jesus has to be first and foremost in our desire. Jesus has to come first. Look, the Bible says we love, we can love because why? Because Jesus loved us first. Without his love, without coming to him to receive his love, we don't have the capacity to truly love each other as we've been called to do. Because, look, some people can be very difficult to love. You, there are people that are easy to love, but there are people that are hard to love. And when you try to love the people who are difficult to love, you'll find that your natural energies, your natural love runs out real quick and you'll find you need to come to Jesus to receive his love first. You know, coming to the end of the sermon, or we're coming toward the end of service, coming to the end of our last Sunday together in 2020, we're about to turn the corner. We're about to say goodbye to the year 2020. And then for the next month or so, we'll be writing 2020 on our checks and having to cross it out. And <laughs> But here's the thing, when we look forward to 2021, you know, and, and I haven't done this in, in a long time, but I would like us together as a church to make a resolution for the new year. I would like us to make a resolution. Let's be like Simeon. Let's aim to be like Simeon. Let's aim to be just and to be devout. Let us aim for the Holy Spirit to be upon us to dwell in us, no matter what 2021 brings us, because we really don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, no matter what 2021 brings us, let us as a church put our hope, put our all in Jesus Christ. Let Jesus Christ again be our first love and let him define who we are and what we do and what matters to us and what's important to us. Let us fix our eyes on him. Let us, Porchlight as a church, remember our first love. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you are our first and greatest love, that you are the only love that's worth anything in this world. And I pray for us, Lord, this morning as a church, that you would help us to turn our eyes back to you. Help us, Jesus, this morning, whatever the year has been like for each of us, and, and we, we all go through this year differently. We've all went through the pandemic differently, Lord, but whatever the case may be, help each and every one of us to turn our eyes to you. If the year's been particularly hard, may we not fix it on our hardships. If we've been blessed, Lord, and the year has gone by pretty smoothly, may we not become lax in our comfort. But Lord, as we turn the page and as we begin a new year, Help us as a church to renew our love for you and to fix our eyes on you once again. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.